Bowers Game Corner presents Gen Con Video Bonanza 2015. Brought to you by Gatekeeper Games, makers of the King's Armory, Thunder Track, the new sequel to Turbo Rally Card Racing, and the generous support of our Kickstarter backers. Ahoy there, YouTube! We're back again today for something very, very special. Our Gen Con Bonanza Top 10 Most Anticipated Games of 2015. As many of you know, we did a Gen Con Bonanza last year. We shot over 100 videos at Gen Con last year. We're going to do it again this year. we got Kickstarter running, potentially right now. Uh, shameless plug, be sure to check it out in the Kickstarter link below. We would definitely love your support. But I am here today with my Editor-in-Chief, Eric Baca, and my brother-in-law, AJ Sanfilippo, which is going to be our three-man crew. We're going to be taking to Gen Con this year. We'll be talking about our top 10 most anticipated games. It's going to be 30 unique games in this list. We've got some honorable mentions to get to, but before we get to that, I do want to mention that we're going to be giving away free games straight from us to your face. We're going to be giving away a second edition copy of Good Cop, Bad Cop from Overworld Games, an absolutely spectacular game. We're going to be giving away a copy of The Voting Game from The Voting Game LLC, a funny little party game. And then we're going to be giving a copy of Suro from Calliope Games. And these will all be brand new. I'm just showing you used copies. But those will all be brand new. All you have to do is be sure to click on the subscribe button down below and post in the comments below your most anticipated game of Gen Con. So for you, those of you not to know, Gen Con, huge, big convention, Indianapolis. Yeah, looking at, uh, I think, 58,000 people last year. Yeah. In original attendance. Tons and tons and tons of games released. This is my sheet. These are just the games that we picked, and there was, like, eh, close to 600 games on that list or something like That's that. That's a book. At least. You have a book there. Absurd. Absurd. But first, before we get to the games, let's get to our honorable mentions. Start over with you, Eric. What do you got on your honorable mentions? Um, I've got two real quick. Uh, Cheap-ass games. Uh, none of your games made my list, but you're on my radar, and I'm, I'm really interested in seeing what you got at your booth. And then uh, Drinking Dice, not really a game, but I do want to mention... Uh, you know, a good way to turn any game with a D6 in it into a drinking game. Yeah, from uh, Bigfoot's games. They'll actually be there selling their dice and uh, Bigfoot's. And I think they're going to be showing off their new zombie game, uh, Pazic, which I'm pretty excited for. Uh, I got a couple honorable mentions I'll mention real quick. Eminent Domain Microcosm from Tasty Minstrel. Bombers and Traders, the expansion to uh, Good Cop, Bad Cop from Overworld Games. New York 1901 from Blue Orange Games. Spyfall from Cryptozoic. Two Rooms and a Boom from Tuesday Night Games. I didn't put any of those games on my list, even though they all will be at sale at Gen Con, because I know they are already spectacular. I love each and every one of those games. I've reviewed many of them. Uh, you should check out all of those games. So you got any honorable mentions? Yeah, Chaos Cove. It's a game about chaos. I want to see if they can follow that up. And Terra, it's a trivia-based game which asks you questions about distances of different things or sizes of different things. And what I thought was funny is they had an imperial side and a metric side. Oh. So that's very... Actually, awful, I'm really excited about both those games as well. Andrew Fetterspiel is the creator of Chaos Cove, and he, uh, he sent me a couple Kickstarter games. Apothka, one's up on Kickstarter right now, is really good, and his old uh, Knee Jerk, another good one. And then the Terra was actually a reprint of a different game that uh, was actually really good. It's by the same guy, I believe, who made Power Grid. So I'm excited for that one, too. Anytime yeah, you oh, get yeah. I enjoy Power, Power Grid, Grid. Yeah. yeah. So we're going to start with our number 10. And Eric, what do you got for number 10? Uh, number 10, I got uh, Rattle, Battle, and Grab the Loot. It's a dice rolling game. I'm really into those. And it's pirate themed, and that really gets me. Yeah, from Portal Games. This one's by Ignashi Trevichek. I'm a big fan of his work, uh, Robinson Crusoe and such. Uh, it's got some really cool mechanisms where you're going to be building your ship. I, uh, I'm pretty excited about that one as well. It narrowly did not make my list. But yeah, I definitely think that's one to look out for. Even though the $60 price tag, a little bit expensive, but lots of custom dice and goodies well, like that. It looks good, though. Uh, my number 10 is Game of Crowns from AEG. I was more excited about this game when I first looked into it, and then I saw Marco had a review of it that was eh, lukewarm at best. He said it was pretty good, though. Uh, but I really enjoy Game of Thrones. I like the idea. I think we can play up to nine players, four to nine players, 45 minutes, so it's 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 got that party aspect. Uh, it's got the party aspect, but with like more gaminess than like your typical party game, which I do look forward to. Anything inspired by Game of Thrones is going to be good. Yeah, it's got sabotage, bluffing, all that sort of stuff. Uh, I'm excited to see how it works out. It was a little bit higher, but I've upped it down to ten. But needless to say, one that I want to check out. My number ten is shh. <laughs> it's a uh, it's a game published by Perplexed, and it's a. Uh, it's a game where you have everybody playing together and you can't talk to each other. And you have to spell out words with all the consonants in the alphabet. And No, thank you. And it becomes, obviously games like, 
that you're not allowed to talk in become extremely difficult, and I think that's an interesting mechanic that should be used more often. Yeah, it's fun. That sounds like a lot of fun. That one was uh, on my big list. Had to whittle that one off. See, and I'm interested in this game not for the same reason they are. I'm interested because it's, it's from the packet games. Did you guys look into that? It's a, yeah, yeah, there's, there's a few different ones. There. Yeah, there's like six or seven games. micro games. Yeah I, yeah, I followed it on Kickstarter. I didn't back it because I wasn't sure it was going to be good or not. I'll be interested to see how many of the games are good. Because, I mean, you got eight games in there. Chances are a couple of them got to be good. But the game itself is going to be like this small. Like it's going to be ridiculously small. Interesting idea. I don't know if it's going to. It's only forty dollars for that entire eight pack too. So. Yeah, but they all six dollars for the single. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I, I I'll be interested to check it out. I, I'm looking forward to trying out the games. Get what you pay for. All right, moving on to Absolutely. number nine. Uh, number nine, I got Viceroy uh, from Mayday <laughs> Games. Uh, this one's one to four players. It's uh, auction based. Uh, card game uh, that also deals with civilizations. Uh, you're building a lot of stuff up at, uh, at the same time. Yeah, I, uh, I'm i really excited about this. I actually got more excited. I When I was doing research, I saw a Tom Vassell's review of this where he just gushed about this game. I've seen some other people gushing about the game. Apparently, it's supposed to be more like a, a gamer version of Splendor, which is a game I really, really enjoy. I'm pretty sure the theme's probably going to fall the wayside like Splendor, but yeah, this is one I'm really wanting to check out as well. My number nine is deck building, the deck building game. It's a nice meme, but <laughs> uh, I think in order to parody a game, you re or parody anything, you really have to understand what you're focusing on, right? So, like, look at, if you're into movies, Galaxy Quest. It's like the third best Star Trek movie ever made. It's a parody of them. So I think this has a lot of potential. You think they did a lot of research on deck building? <laughs> I think they absolutely <laughs> They built a lot of decks. Yeah, they probably built a lot of decks. <laughs> Uh, yeah, this one I was like, eh, on, but it's got a $10 price tag. It's a micro game, and I watched a video on it. It's from Greater Than Game, who puts out some pretty good games, and um, it's supposed to play in 5 to 10 minutes, 10 minutes. And it's one of those games that you can demo at Gen Con, yeah. decide if you like it, and then pull the trigger on it. And I like that when you can really get a feel for the game. Uh, so, yeah, I'm definitely going to try this one out. Let's Short, see. sweet. It made me chuckle enough that I might even right. buy it. Yeah, I did as well. That's, that's a main selling point for me. My number nine, a little bit on the odd side, is called Dr. Panic from Repros Production. Now, this is a real-time game, which I know Eric absolutely adores, uh, where you're actually going to be trying to, to be, you're going to be like doctor's assistants, and you're trying to do like crazy, it's a party game, where you're trying to do these crazy activities before a patient dies. And so you're trying to keep the patient alive by doing a bunch of mini-games. This game could be really, really fun, or it could be absolutely god-awful. So I'm, 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 I'm perfectly clear on that. I watched the video, and I was like, it's on your top ten, then. I was like, this could be really freaking good, or this could just be absolutely terrible. So I'm hoping it's really good. Repost Production has a very good track record. They got a... Uh, Rampage, Seven Wonders, yeah. a lot of good yeah, games under their belt, Cash and Guns. So I'm hoping this is on the good side, but my number nine is Dr. Panic from Repost Productions. Moving on to number eight. I'll start it off. Ghostbusters? As simple as it gets. I like Ghostbusters. I want to play a Ghostbusters board game. It's as clear as it gets. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm pretty excited. I think this was actually one of the ones that was on all three of our lists, and um, yeah, I'm... I'm there's one thing that worries me about this game, though, and it's the same thing that worried about Mega Man game last year, which is that it's a miniatures game. And a lot of times, it's like a pretty lady. Like, a pretty lady doesn't have to have a great personality. Same with miniatures games. You got a miniatures <laughs> game, you don't have to have the best gameplay because you got those big old miniatures. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, but yes, the theme looks cool. It's got, like, episodic content where you play, you know, you sit, it's kind of like Mice and yeah. Mystics. You sit down, you play for 30 minutes to an hour, and you can go through adventures. To two hours. Some of the, some of the adventures go quite long. Yeah, I, I'm excited about this game. I'm excited to see the miniatures, check it out how it was. And I almost backed it on Kickstarter, but it was way, way too expensive. You got a number eight? Oh, uh, yeah. My number eight is uh, Legendary Encounters. Uh, it's the Predator deck building game. Mm -hmm. uh, this one, just like uh, Ghostbusters, I loved Predator. And uh, can't wait to see what they're doing with the deck building. I love that. And it's also co op, which is uh, something you don't really see the movie parody get into I don't think I don't know there, there, there's think? a bunch of guys in there trying to fight predators. oh no I definitely get why they did it here and I, I'm excited to see it uh, yeah Predator this is one of those games that I am super excited about but the bottom line is I couldn't put it on my list because I don't own Marvel Legendary I don't own Alien Legendary and I absolutely want to play a mega game where it's like Spider-Man versus the Predator with the aliens because all, yeah. all of them can, can fit together even though I guess 
Uh, marble doesn't fit in quite perfectly, but I'm still excited to see somebody try and do that. Do it anyways. Plus, it's yeah, one to five players, so you can play it solo if you don't have any friends. So, I like that as well. <laughs> <laughs> and for the no friend people. <laughs> my number eight is The Networks from Formal Ferret Games. And this one... I was not going to put it on my list because it doesn't come out for quite some time, but it, the theme really intrigued me. Essentially, you're going to be running a network television channel. Uh, it's 60 to 90 minutes. You're trying to get TV stars and different shows, and you're trying to mush them together to get the best ratings. But at the same time, you have to be able to be willing to pull the plug when a show is getting stagnant. Decide when you want to do reruns, when you want to, how you want to do it. It sounds like it's got a lot of really cool things going on in there. It's uh, it's card drafting, which is another mechanic that I really like, a la Seven Wonders, Sushi Go, stuff like that. Is this the one with Ted Turner on the front? I, the cover? <laughs> well, there is no image available, so it is not <laughs> off the table yet. Uh, I'm not sure. I, this is one I'm really skeptical about because there's a lot of cool stuff that's, that sounds like there's a lot of cool ideas in here. I'll see at Gen Con if they can mush it all together into something beautiful. But I, my number eight is The Networks from Formal Fair Games. All of us had movie-themed number eights. Was no. that a... Actually, mine was TV. Was that intentional? There's a movie named The Network, though. So. I thought that was The Net. Mm, Sandra Bullock. I yeah. <laughs> Spank bank. All right, number seven. Uh, number seven, I've got City of Gears from Arcane Wonders. Uh, a little help from Game Crafter. Uh, two One of our sponsors, by the way. Oh, uh, yeah? Uh, two, uh, two to four players, about 45 minutes. It's also dice, city building, and... Uh, from what I hear, this is supposed to pack in a Euro game in 45 minutes. Um, we'll see. Always a good thing. <laughs> we'll see. I'm I'm also excited about this one as well, just because Dice Sour Essentials line, and I've played, I think, four of the games that are going to be one of, i played three of the games that are on the Dice Tower Essentials line. Sheriff of Nottingham, obviously fantastic. Oh, I tried Omitama, yeah. which was actually supposed to be on honorable mm -hmm. matches, and I forgot, which is fantastic. I hate the theme. You know, I hate steampunk. I think it's a dumb theme, but I, I like still... Steampunk. Yeah. I still think the game's going to be really Hit or good. miss. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. But yes, I'm, I will try anything that the Dice Tower Essentials comes out with, and I'm pretty sure this is probably going to be pretty good. What do you got for number seven, AJ? Uh, I think we might have the same one. Castles of Mad King Ludwig, the uh, expansion secrets. Is that right? I did not have that on my list, but it was on my short list. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Well, I have that. More castles. That game's amazing. Adding more stuff to it is only going to make it better. Yep, BZ Games, uh, I'm a big fan of that game as well. The only thing that really detracts from me from that game is it is two to four players. I was hoping Expansion would add a fifth player. Uh, but they, they have some cool stuff like moats and secret rooms yeah, and stuff like that. Different ways to get value on here. I would like to get a demo of this one and definitely get my impressions on that because that definitely looks pretty cool. I'm not sure if that one's going to be on sale there. They haven't said it yet, but hopefully it is. My number seven, uh, much like my number nine, is a little bit on the odd side, and that is Iron and Ale, King of the Cake from Table Forged LLC. And this is a drinking game, because if you didn't know, I like to drink. <laughs> uh, and I really enjoyed the, the original Iron and Ale. It was actually one of the hits of Gen Con last year, one of the smaller hits. It sold out completely like we went there. I don't think there's another scenario that we can think of off the top of our heads that would pit our wives doing a Push-up competition. <laughs> what? Yeah. My wife was pregnant that. at the time. <laughs> yes, you better play it. It is a... Iron and Ale is a drinking game where you challenge each other to dwarven drinking challenges. Melina slapped me in the face. <laughs> they had like this back-to-back -back wrestling thing going on, some arm wrestling, I all sorts this. of fun stuff. Uh, they got a small box expansion coming out. It's only going to be 13 bucks. It's got new challenges, which is what I'm really looking forward to. It's got a new king mechanism I'm looking forward to trying. And they're really nice guys. We interviewed them. They were super awesome. Hopefully we'll get to see them again this year. But that's my number seven, Iron and Ale, King of the Keg. If you've not tried Iron and Ale and you like drinking games, be sure to check it out. Because there is a game attached to it, too. It's not just Oh, like, yeah. It's not yeah, like that's games. what makes it fun. All right. So those were our number sevens. Moving down on to number six. I got Medieval Academy uh, from Yellow. Um, it's from Yellow. It's probably good. Yeah. Um, the theme is you're a squire trying to become a knight. Uh, you're trying to accomplish all these different tasks to upgrade yourself. Um, two to five players. Card drafting is what you're doing, and I think it uh, looks pretty. A lot of Yellow's artwork is, is really catchy, and uh, that's what caught me onto this one. Yeah, this was actually one of the uh, the big hits of the show at Essen last year. And uh, I know, actually, Tom Vassell tried to get it on his Dice Tower Essentials line. And uh, this is the first time it's being released in America. 
I am a big fan of this. I want to try it out, definitely. But the $40 price tag kind of deterred me a little bit, especially if it is just cards. I'm always a little bit wary when I get a game that's all cards and it's $40. I'm like, hmm. But yellow has yet to steer me wrong, so I'm looking forward to this one. Plus, it's supposed to be on the Gateway Plus kind of game, so it's nice yeah, and light yeah, and simple. Yeah. Easy to learn. Yellow's good about that. My number six is Moonquake Escape from Breaking Games. It was actually a, uh, I, I think Ad Magic like had a baby, and their baby is now a game company. Ad Magic is a, a game manufacturer, and they actually, I think they started their own game company called Breaking Games. We're going to be interviewing, so we'll find out more about it. But this game looks super awesome. It's got a 3D board, and I'll just read some of this. So essentially, you have broken out of a prison on the moon and now you are trying to escape but the board is like this three-dimensional moving being where you are trying to escape from it the prototype pieces look really cool i'm excited to see the whole getup. i'm actually going to see since we're going to be interviewing they can bring it so we can try it out it looks really cool uh it's not coming out it's going it's actually coming out in 2016 but moonquake escape uh looks really really cool that's from breaking games Mine is uh, Extra Extra. It's by Mayfair Games. Yes. They make I saw this one. Yeah. yeah. You, uh, you build a newspaper and you have to fill it, the limited space you have, with as much value as you can based off stories and stuff like that. No thanks. <laughs> it looks really good. I really like value based games or econ games. Uh, this is similar to that. And I trust Mayfair to just make you know really good games. Yeah, this one, uh, it's on the Meteor side, 60 minutes to 150 minutes. This was on my short list as well. Uh, auction bidding, something I really enjoy. Tile placement, work replacement is my favorite camp mechanism. Uh, I like the theme. I like the newspaper theme. And the artwork. The artwork looks really good just for the yeah. box. So, yeah, I think this, uh, hopefully this will be a home run for Mayfair. I have a 1920s theme look about it, I think, if I remember right. Yep. Looks good. Number five. Uh, number five, I got three cheers for Master. Uh, this one, it, what's better than a, a dark minion cheerleading squad yeah. trying to cheer up their their overlord? That one caught me immediately. I don't even know what, I, hand management of some sort, I assume. Uh, I don't know, I just, I saw it and it... I almost put this one on my list too. It, it's, <laughs> it looks extremely, <laughs> extremely goofy. My, my note I wrote on this game... The is all capitals. It says meh. <laughs> uh, but I actually watched a review of it. Uh, it's got a dumb theme, in my opinion, but it's hand management and humor. Humor is very, very hit and miss in our hobby, as many of you know. It's, it can be really bad or really not bad. Uh, but I actually saw a review from, I think it was the Bearded Meeple, who said it was actually pretty good. And um, 20 minute rule booklet, 20 minute or 20 page rule booklet, I thought was a little bit odd, but. Um, Seems long. Uh, it may list every card. Yeah. And yeah, plus, it's only Atlas. 20 bucks. So, uh, yeah, Atlas Games, three cheers for Masters. Not one on my list, but you guys both had on there, so it can't be bad. Or it could be. It could be really bad. <laughs> it could be. <laughs> my number five is Pro Heats from Blue Orange Games. And uh, this game looks really cool. I, I, I watched a video on this, and it seems like it's Sheriff of Nottingham Light. Now, Sheriff of Nottingham is already a light game. Uh, but this one plays in 20 minutes, which instantly intrigued me. Hopefully, it's got a, it looks like it's got a pretty easy setup, and it really does. Like uh, the guy from Blue Orange Games, Brandon, was like explaining how the game worked, and it was like that sounds a lot like Sheriff of Nottingham. But if it's more streamlined, I mean, more streamlined is rarely ever a bad thing. Uh, it's got bluffing, mafia theme. I'm a big fan of the mafia theme. Uh, so that's Pro Heats from Blue Orange Games. I'm pretty sure that one's going to be on sale at Gen Con. So uh, that's one to check out. My number five is New Salem it's by the guys that made Good Cop, Bad Cop, which I think we're giving away a copy of. The right? new second edition. Just got to yeah, post it in the comments new... below and subscribe. Yeah, it's it's more subterfuge and figuring out who the witch is this time instead of the bad cop. And I think that it's more complex than Good Cop, Bad Cop, and I think that's a good thing. Yeah, it is more gamer. I actually did a review of this uh, for the Kickstarter prototype, and I, I liked it. I didn't like it as much as Good Cop, Bad Cop, but I liked uh, the randomness of the equipment cards. But I definitely think some people will like it. Plus, it has gorgeous artwork from what I've seen. And Number four? Number four. That's number after four. five. Number four, I got Flick 'em Up. Before it. Want <laughs> <laughs> some cake? I got some <laughs> cake? No thanks. Cake? No, no thanks. Uh, number four, I got Flick 'em Up. Uh, this is from Pretzel Games. It's two to ten players, thirty minutes. You're flicking discs. Uh, it's I know I don't know if everyone likes them. Dexterity game, uh, if you will. <laughs> flicking discs uh, like you're a cowboy shooting at things. Uh, you can be a bad guy, a good guy. 
however you want. Um, but yeah, you get to throw stuff at other stuff and knock it over, and you get you get good things from it. So yeah, I, I was doing research on this one. I saw a seventy dollar price tag, and I was like, <clears throat> oh my god, seventy dollars! <laughs> I want to see it. But then I saw a video of it, and the components were amazing. Like. It looks like a giant toy, but yeah, two to ten players, thirty minutes. It looks really cool. This was uh, this is actually one that I had on my list as well. Oh so yeah, fight over. My number four is Campaign Trail from Cosmic Wombat Games. Uh, now, Cosmic Wombat Games, many of you guys don't know them. They're, this is actually their second game. They made Stones of Fate, which was a memory game I really enjoyed. Uh, but this one is actually going to have you running as the president. What I like about this is it's either going to be um, there's three people that are going to be running for the president. And you're going to be going around, you could be mudslinging or campaigning or doing all sorts of cool things. But then if you have up to six players, you can do team-based games. Where one of you will be the president, one of you will be the vice president. You'll be working together, driving, or, you know, going all around the country, trying to get votes. It looks really, really cool. We saw it at Gen Con last yeah, year. Yeah, yeah, we watched it. And, uh, the, yeah, you can go back and watch the video of, of the guy telling us all about it. And it's uh, it's it's... There's just so much to it. There's so many levels to it that it, it keeps you going. So it's two hours, so it's a pretty meaty game. Uh, I'm excited to try that one out. And the whole point is running for president, which is your favorite mechanic. Yeah. That, that is probably my favorite mechanic <laughs> ever. Yeah. Yeah. All right, number four. Speaking of which, friends have been lost yeah. <laughs> over Battlestar Speaking Galactica President. My campaigns. fourth game is Jolly Roger. It's from Ares Games, and uh, one player is the captain. Or the president, I guess. <laughs> and he the gets to decide. President. Yeah, the boat president. And he gets to decide where everybody goes and what actions they'll take. And then if you don't like those actions, you can mutiny him. <laughs> and then everybody votes. And if you don't, if you all agree, he gets mutinied, and then somebody else becomes president. Or, you know, cap, obviously captain. That's the thing. Uh, yeah, it's basically the mechanic that ruined Battle Battlestar Galactica for us because of you. So I think it's the that's like the center point. I feel like it's going to be a pretty good game. What is our group? What he's trying to say is pretty much I would try and mutiny every single yeah, every time. Single time <laughs> this yeah. game. Uh, I was really intrigued by this. Uh, that's another thing that I noticed. Did you guys notice there was a F load of pirate games. Yeah. There was a lot of pirate it's games. The year of the it's pirate. the new zombie. Last it year, I thought it was year. zombies and monsters, and this year it was just pirate game, pirate game, pirate game. <clears throat> but I was really intrigued by this because it was only 20 bucks too. Um, and it, what is it, played nine players? Uh, four to ten players. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, 30 minutes, four to ten players, 20 bucks. You got me sold already. Uh, this is what I'm hoping we can definitely demo this year. <clears throat> on to number three. I have King's Armory from Gatekeeper Games. Uh, this one's one to seven players, 120 minutes, uh, and you're looking at co-op, dice game, uh, and it's all built around uh, tower defense. It's uh, trying to mimic uh, video games and the way that they have different maps. you got different tiles, so your map's always different, and you're trying to roll and build up your defenses and uh, ward off this evil horde, if you will. And the company that made this is actually <clears throat> one of our main sponsors, and uh, they sent me a review copy of this to review early. There's an embargo on it, but I can tell you it's a really great game. Lots of modular. Like, every game is going to be different. Uh, you're going to be upgrading your upgrading everything in different ways each time. Do you want to hire people to help you out? Do you want to upgrade your equipment? Do you want to get new equipment? Do you want to trade equipment? Lots of cool stuff. Different monsters coming out different times. Like you said, yeah. modular board. Yeah. Uh, I think it's going to be, I, I could actually see this being, and I said this in the review, some people's favorite game of all time. Sounds like a roguelike, then. Yeah, it is. It's a, genre. It's a little bit fidgety, but with how much stuff is going on, it had to be. But yeah, it looks, it is amazing. I played it. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. So yeah, King's Armory, definitely a good choice. My number three is Mysterium from Libelbird. 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 <clears throat> I don't know. Nailed it. <laughs> Two to seven players, uh, and this game actually has been out for a while, but it's been out in like Germany and Greece and other countries that I can name more than two of them, I swear. Canada. <laughs> I don't think it was out in Canada. Uh, but essentially, it's like Dixit, and if any of you see my review of Dixit, I hate Dixit. I think you hated Dixit, too. Uh, it's okay. <laughs> yeah, I hate I like Dixit. Dixit. But this game adds deduction, exploration, and murder mystery. Essentially, one person is going to be a ghost inside of a haunted house. I, I don't know if it's actually haunted, but I'm going to pretend it's haunted. And they're going to be trying 
to give play cards on people as nightmares. And they're going to be trying to solve a mystery a la Clue. You're going to have a, a murder and a murder weapon in a different room, and you're going to be handing people cards, and then everyone's going to try and deduce what cards you are giving out to try and figure out and solve the mystery. You can't say anything. You're the ghost. And then you just sit back and listen to what everybody else says and then try and learn from what they're saying to give them a different card next time. It got rave reviews at BGG Con. And this is actually, you know, I try and limit myself to actually purchasing one game at Gen Con. I think this might be the one I purchased if I like it. It sounds really cool. Really good looking artwork. Um, 30 to 60 minute, 2 to 7 players. Looks really cool. That's Mysterium. <laughs> I'm actually really excited about my number three. It's the Princess Bride, the, uh, <coughs> the Battle of Wits. I wanted this one. You got it. As long as we talk about it, I'm okay. Absolutely. <laughs> it's it's basically the scene from the movie where it's never going against a Sicilian when death is on the line, but in board game form. It's two to ten players. Everybody gets a cup. You either decide to put poison <coughs> in it or not, and you try to trick other players into drinking poison. It's as simple as it gets, and I love the Princess Bride. Another movie theme for me. Yeah, yeah, I was looking at this one. You, but you, it's either poison or whatever the reverse of poison is, antidote maybe. <laughs> Not poison. Just, just wine. And then, and just and then you can also bid on which cups you think are... Are poison. Yeah, yeah are right. poison. So it's, yeah. I, I, I like that. I, they had yeah. two other Princess Bride games, and I looked at both of those, and I'm a fan of the movie, but this one actually looked like <laughs> it was a fun game to play. Game Salute, one of our sponsors, actually came up with that game, yeah? Oh, yeah? Uh, I actually passed by all three of those games because I have zero interest in The Princess Bride. <laughs> but after seeing both yeah, of you they, put it on the yeah. list, I was like, all right, I'm going to check this out. Uh, and I wrote down, it has interesting sounding mechanics. Two to ten players is intriguing to me. Fifteen minutes. Uh, the theme is actually the biggest attractor for me, but the gameplay sounds like it could be some Even pretty fun don't game. Like the movie. So it's, uh... I don't dislike the movie. I just don't see what all the hubbub is about. Like it's okay. It's a good movie. I like Andre the Giant. All right. So it's so it's movie it's movie games and pirates this year, huh? Yeah. Next I think year movie games are ninjas. always a regular thing though. I guess ninjas. Yeah, if it keeps following this trend. Or nineteen twenties. All right, we get to <laughs> number two, Eric, and I I love your number two. Uh, it's Risk Game of Thrones. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> Cheers. Uh. <laughs> I know what you're thinking. <laughs> I know what you're thinking. But Risk was always one of those classic games for me. And now with my love of Game of Thrones and just the maps that you're using, it throws a new spin on it. Hopefully they've added a lot of stuff. I'm. This is where I'm leaning on most anticipated. Like, I'm, I want to see <coughs> this. I want to get up close and, and see what they're actually messing with and what they're adding to the game. Hopefully it's enough to make it new, but it's still got it's still risk. Yeah, two to four hours, so it sounds like it's still risk. <laughs> uh, and, and I and I bad mouth again, but I actually do. I like I used to like Risk a lot. Obviously now I don't play it because I love Risk. There's tons of other games, but I love Game of Thrones, and I think if any theme is going to fit Risk perfectly, it would be Game of Thrones. I mean, working yeah. together to you know the, the, the treachery, attacking all that yeah. stuff. Lord of the Rings or something. <laughs> sometimes you Fantasy sometimes thing. you force it. Sometimes you can see it forced. Yeah. You know they're trying to fit. <clears throat> You know, whatever, and they're doing the Monopoly. Let's make blah blah Monopoly. You know, um, but this it, it seems like it fits enough right. to where it's gonna breathe new life into that game for me. No, I'm hoping they have like custom troops and stuff too. Like, I'd love to see it where, like, uh, say the Starks had more power if they're in the snow or something yeah, like yeah. that, and then Targaryens would have dragons that would fight for them. They'd be a super powerful unit. Like, if they get deep into the theme, I could see this be a really cool. Uh, the other big thing that struck me from this was a seventy-five dollar price yeah, tag. Yeah. Jesus, it seventy-five ends up just bucks. Just being risk. I want Peter yeah. Dinklage <laughs> in that yes. box. That's I want to see me. it. I just, I just want to see it. All right, and then we'll see. My number two is Dark Moon from Stronghold Games. This is for three to seven players. Bluffing, deduction, dice, movie, TV, radio theme. What does that mean? You've never heard of Dark Moon? Well, this used to be called Battlestar Galactica Express. And what it says it is, it is an hour to an hour and 15 minute version of Battlestar Galactica stripping away a lot of stuff you don't need and just leaving that good cylon is stuff you like. Great. So and we can hate you, we can hate you <laughs> even, even sooner. <laughs> but obviously Stronghold Games does not have the license, so they, they changed it to a Dark Moon theme, which apparently is supposed to be like It, the, uh, the, the popular John Carpenter movie, which I love that movie as a kid. I was a messed up kid. 
but yeah, so I'm really excited about this game. I would really love to try this one out. And it actually won a, a print and play award for Board Game Geek as being one of the best print and plays back when it was that. So I'm excited to see the new components, see how the theme melds together. Uh, so that one is Dark Moon. I'm really excited to try that one out. Did say John Carpenter's It? Didn't John Carpenter make it? It? Oh, no, no, It. Oh, uh, uh, what was the it? Thing? The Thing? The Thing. Oh, okay. It, Stephen Antarctica. King. Right. Not Hold the, the comments. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> oh, anyway, God. I'm just going to move on to my next game. <laughs> it's Stockpile by Navu Games. <clears throat> if that's wrong, argue with me in the comments later. Uh, <laughs> it's another econ-based game. <laughs> It's another, it's another econ based game. I, I I really like value or econ based games, and it's centered around the idea that everybody knows something about the stock market, right? You're given every player is given different insider trading tips, and then based off that, oh, you yeah. can either play against other people or you know use your own ideas to get ahead of everybody. And whoever has the most money at the end of the game wins. It seems just really like real life. Yeah. Just like real life. <laughs> uh, yeah, this one was on Kickstarter. It had great components. I saw it had some good reviews. Uh, I like the au I love auction mechanisms. I love stock market games. I love yeah. trying to min max mm -hmm. and trying to figure that sort of stuff out. Plus, I thought the artwork was really nice. Looked very bright. It popped. Oh, which I like. You're into insider trading. Uh, if I had enough money, I would definitely. I would not be on the level. <laughs> well, <it's just> imagination. <laughs> the only thing that can make this game better for me is they have Martha Stewart as a playable character. Ooh, expansion. <laughs> Navu Games. All right, number All right, one. My number one. Uh, this one uh, put a lot of question marks over my head. Um, so I'm really, I really want to see, and and this could be a big flop. It could be really good. But my number one is Mr. Game from Margrave Games. Uh, this is four to eight players. It's a uh, chaotic modular board game. <coughs> what the way that it makes it sound? It's uh, it's almost like f what Flux is to card games. Uh, the goal is always changing. Um, you can block people and you can do other things and you're trying to navigate this board, but people are always messing with it. So, uh, you know, I can see, it, you know, one of these games lasting anywhere from two minutes or maybe could take forever. Uh, That's always a great <laughs> you know? endorsement. You could take two minutes or two hours, guys. This is going to put Risk Clone on his number two. <laughs> Um, the one thing that you mentioned that I thought was kind of interesting is uh, apparently this has an interesting mechanism. I don't know if it's a mechanism where someone is going to be the keeper of the rules, where they they intentionally left the rules kind of broken. <laughs> yeah, they're vague. They're vague. <laughs> so really, someone is that they are. So somebody has to judge. Someone's got to dictate. Someone standard. makes the rules up. You make the rules up as you go along. It's so an impartial party. It could that. be a fly or die. It seems like a, a a great board game for a group of game designers. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Just in case this you're is, in a game designer. This is my list. <laughs> I thought it sounded interesting. Um, but yeah, I agree with you. This could be really, really, it does really, really bad funny. or kind yeah. of fun. I, I'm. It I seems like they're trying to, to it. they're trying to hit a home run with a wiffle ball. You so, just wanted to, yeah, I wanted to shoot one that expression. I came up with that. I was like, this needs to go in there. All right, my number one <laughs> is Post Human from Mighty Box and Mr. B Games. And I went through the list and I immediately knew that this was going to be number one, not even close. Dark Moon looked really cool, but this to me just scratched every one of the itches I got. It's an adventure game, dice rolling, exploration, fighting. Uh, it's got partnerships. It's got asymmetrical powers. And essentially what has happened is the world is over. And shocker, there's no zombies. But there are monsters who are going to be attacking you and trying to kill you. And you're trying to get to point A, point B, whatever the spot is, a golden city of gold. And you're trying to survive. But what's going to happen is you're going to be fighting these monsters. And slowly but surely they're going to scratch away it. And you're going to start mutating and mutating. And it's the question of, oh, do I want to try and keep pushing forward? Or do I want to just, just die and become a mutant? Which At which point you can try and kill your other opponents and you can still win by making sure that nobody else loses um nice. modular board tons of variability it looks really really cool I, honestly this is my number one with a bullet it is not out unfortunately at gen con which stinks but it looks amazing the artwork looks cool the theme sounds awesome it sounds like another game that's dripping with theme and i love games that are dripping with theme post human i kind of cheated on my number one because we've already played it. But it is an amazing game. It's Between Two Cities by Stonemaier Games. 
And it's a tile drafting game where you have to play with the person on your left and the person on your right. And that asymmetric co-op really helps the game be a lot deeper than it normally would if you could just ignore somebody on your left or right and play with one person. It's, I, I, I work real hard to ignore people on my right. Yeah. <laughs> well, in this game, you couldn't do that, right? You would lose. Your lowest scoring city is the one that ends up being your scoring city at the end of the game. So there becomes this like weird dynamic where you're not necessarily playing with a person you're you doing well with. And you have to actually like maybe, you know, hurt that city a little bit so they don't end up beating it. Sure, why not? Yeah, this... Um, what did you think about it? This game is fantastic. This is, so far, my number one game of the year. And it's going to come out later this year. I think Why are you guys holding this cake up for me? <laughs> it's so coming good. out at Essen, and I'm pretty sure that this is going to be on a lot of people's top five, top ten games of the year. It plays in 20 minutes, and when it says it plays in 20 minutes, it actually plays in 20 minutes. Two to seven players. Yeah. It's good in every way, shape, and form. The two-player version's, you know, nice and tight. The seven-player version's really cool because you have, like, these tough decisions to make. Like, like, the person on your right might want this tile, but the person on your left might want this tile. They're like, oh, no, you need to do that tile. But at the same time, those two people are talking with the person next to them, right. and it's just, oh, it is just everything you want in the game, and it's 20 freaking minutes. Super quick. It's cooperative, so it's easy to teach. Just an absolute fantastic game. I think this is going to be an evergreen, a game that just explodes. That's Between Two City from Stonemaier Games. And those are our top ten most anticipated games of Gen Con. Hooray! What did we get right? What did we get wrong? Navu? Nabo? What? I don't know. Rick well, Nabo. Get out in the comments. Let's do it. <laughs> Phonetically, uh, please. But if you enjoyed this content, please be sure to click on the subscribe button if you haven't already, because we're giving away free games. And also, we are running our Kickstarter, hopefully for a couple more days. Be sure to check it out. Show us some love, shares, tweets, pleasures. We're giving away lots of cool stuff. And as always, thanks for your time, YouTube. Bowers Game Corner presents Gen Con Video Bonanza 2015. Brought to you by Gatekeeper Games, makers of the King's Armory, Thunder Track, the new sequel to Turbo Rally Card Racing. In the generosity of these great companies, they support us, go support them.